subdivision surfaces, you can see that the model itself is very uh, small, light uh, model, just a few polygons. But once you add subdivision surfaces to it, with kind of a standard, oops, let's turn that on. Standard, um, let's go ahead and kind of put this over here. Uh, basically, um, subdivision surface, standard thing that you would add to any model here. I just set it up to three, and then you add a displacement. Let's turn the displacement on and hope that it doesn't freak out while we do so. Okay. Uh, of course, um, you're just seeing some of the stuff as a, uh, uh, in kind of like its low resolution format here, but it's just enough to give you an idea. So basically, uh, we've got our low resolution model, and we've already baked our images. So I'm going to go here into our modifiers tab. Uh, I've added the subsurface modifier onto it to give it some smoothness. And then underneath that, I've added the displacement or displace modifier which you can find here under the form, right there, Displace, all right? And for direction, I've selected Normal. For a UV coordinate, I've selected UV. If you have another UV map in there, select a different UV map. You can just select whatever UV map you originally used to bake the image on. And you can see here, I've gone ahead and this thing here, the mid-level and the strength, you can vary that depending on your needs and what looks good, and that was what looked good uh, in my case. And as you can see here, you've got kind of the gross details from the displacement map. Now, the normal map, uh, which is kind of puts the fine details onto the model, may be all you need, especially if this model is, is kind of in the background. But as you can see here, if we go and look at the side view, what a normal map doesn't do is it doesn't really give you these big bumps and ridges here. And so that's why I added a displacement modifier uh, with the... Um, and I used the displacement.exr that I created in the previous tutorial. Uh, so that will, the displacement will go ahead and give you the uh, ridges and bumps and stuff that you need. Uh, let's go ahead and select the objects uh, material node here. And I'll have you know, I've gone ahead up here and I've changed to cycles render. All right. And so we're going to do some cycles render so you can see what it looks like in a real time environment. Uh, before I go into that, um, all I did was I selected a standard kind of a diffuse uh, material here. And let me go into, I went ahead and used nodes. Uh, I can't remember where I found that at. But basically, if you go into your node editor, and if you select the little icon here for uh, textures, or I'm sorry, materials, you can see what the materials are that make up this this node here. So basically it's just a very simple thing. We have a diffuse texture. Uh, I added an image texture and I selected the normals uh, color flat single image. I plugged the color of the image into a normal map node and then I plugged the alpha of the image into the displacement of the material. Uh, from the normal map I selected tangent space and I gave it a higher strength. I've found that the strength of one is, is not very good. I uh, also selected the UV map that we are used to bake the image. And I ran the normal uh, plug from the normal map into the normal of the diffuse texture. So as you can see, it's not a very complex shader network. Uh, basically, you just um, add these nodes here to this diffuse texture and everything is ready to go. Uh, again, image runs into the normal map tangent space, strength of 10, run that plug from normal into normal, and run the alpha from alpha into displacement. That's it. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. Um, again, the, uh, the images, uh, of course, like I said, there was another image involved, which was when you go here to your uh, modifiers, uh, under the displacement, I just I had loaded the image texture from the uh, uh, the displacement that we baked earlier, and I just put that into the displacement modifier. So this is actually the easiest part here. Let me see if there's anything else you need to know before we end.
Um, okay, uh, again, in the displacement modifier, make sure that direction is set to normal and texture coordinates set to UV. That's pretty much it. So let's kind of go over an, a very quick overview. Oh, let's go ahead and we can select rendered here. Start seeing what's going on here in cycles. Uh, so again, um, we'll walk through the entire process. We First, we modeled a very low resolution mushroom just with our standard modeling tools. Uh, then we UV mapped it. Uh, don't forget to UV map it. And then we went ahead and uh, we added a matte cap material on it so we could see what was going on pretty well. And then we, uh, we saved those out as 32-bit uh, EXR images at a very high resolution. In my case, it was 4K. You could maybe do less depending on how far away the model is from your camera. And then we came back into uh, another scene. We, we loaded up our original model, a low-resolution model. And then we went ahead and uh, we created a material, a diffuse material. Uh, we added an image texture. We ran the image texture's color into a normal map node, set to tangent space, made sure to select the UV map, and we set the strength to 10. Ran that normal uh, node, or, I'm sorry, plug into the diffuse shader's plug. We added a displacement. Uh, uh, modifier on top of a subsurface modifier, and then we select the direction to normal, UV textures, uh, coordinate textures to UV, and then mid-level and strength, you just slide these things up and down and play with them until you get something that looks good. And then we just went ahead and turned on cycles, and that was it. We were ready to roll. So that seems like a lot to do. Um, it it kind of is, but as you can see, the results are quite good. You get a extremely high polygon subdivided object you know with, with not that many polygons actually so basically you can see it running in cycles here pretty quickly it just updates right away and basically it's the only way to do this if you want to have like a, a really large scene you're gonna have to bake these uh, textures onto here and again the farther away the object is from the camera the less detail you actually need you get away with using smaller resolution uh, textures like 1k textures or, or even, if it's very far away, you could even just use normal maps. Or if it's a video game, you can just get away with normal maps. But you can see here that we've, we've uh, been able to uh, create a, a very detailed model from a very, very low polygon base mesh. Uh, and, and it's actually, once you've done it once or twice, it's really not that... I mean, it, it, it's a, a quite a few steps, but none of the steps themselves are very difficult. So... It's just that I had to figure out uh, all these little tricks, which I'm now sharing with you, which yeah, it actually took me quite a long time to figure out. I had to you know, go on the internet. And there wasn't actually a lot of uh, data out there. Uh, nobody was mentioning stuff like to save as an EXR and to save as 32-bit and uh, to, to go ahead and set your normal map to tangent space and stuff like that. So hopefully uh, now that information is out there and everybody can make some really awesome uh, Blender products. So I hope this series of tutorials has helped you out, and uh, if there's something I haven't covered or anything, let me know. And uh, all right, uh, look forward to seeing your stuff.